the formal October the 19th council meeting. So if you would please refer to that agenda. I know there are a couple of questions and I thought I saw staff ready to make some presentations on some of the items uh, on this agenda. Uh, so why don't we just start working our way through it. Mr. Brady, are there some staff presentations on some items related to the Yes, Mayor, agenda? the item regarding the uh, bike share. Yes. We have a brief presentation on that. So that would be uh, 4A. A. Okay. And then also later, um, just want to give the council a brief presentation on items 5K and 5L. Okay. I think I've covered all the ones we talked about. Is that correct? Okay. K and L. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I guess with that in mind, council, let's, uh, let's work our way through this. Any questions uh, related to other agenda items for? Mr. Cavanaugh, did you indicate you might have had a question on one of those? Um, I, yes, I have a, a question or a comment on uh, the uh, 6A, the introduction of the... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The, uh, the zoning oh. ordinance. And okay. I guess I just wanted to express some... Um, concerns on this uh, because uh, I know planning and zoning has recommended approval of this. It's uh, it's uh, dramatically changing a uh, site plan that uh, council approved in 2009. I do remember that case. And it's also inconsistent with the general plan as approved by Mesa voters. And so I just have some concerns. I don't necessarily see a compelling reason to, to alter what the voters approved and what council previously approved. And, and uh, over the past couple of years, I've also had some just increasing concerns with the viability and long-term sustainability of cluster housing projects. I know that they were controversial when first introduced to it several years ago, uh, and I, but I, as, over, as we've gone over time, I, <clears throat> again, I've got reservations about that simply, that style of development. So it's just merely a, a comment. It's on for introduction. So this will, uh, this will be on our agenda for Monday for introduction. Mayor, just uh, uh, quickly, we were, uh, I did miss, uh, I think uh, Ms. Solanka wants to uh, give the council a heads up. This item is being uh, reviewed right now. There may be needing some changes. So, Christine, do you want to just share with the council what's going on currently in the review right yeah. now? Council Member oh. Luna. Yes, right. I also had concerns relative to the parking spaces that mm -hmm. have been de designated in the area, as well as whether solid waste can actually go to that, uh, that subdivision and provide the services that are needed. Uh, I also had, you know, it, it is consistent with, inconsistent with the general plan. So I do have some concerns relative to, to that as well. Uh, could you go ahead and speak to uh, potential meetings that you may have on Monday? Yes, I um, became aware of some significant concerns um, that a couple of different departments have on this development this week. Um, I talked to the attorney, Sean Lake, for KB. We are meeting Monday at 1130 um, with the departments um, the, and the applicant to try to resolve some of these issues. It's my understanding that the solid waste collection issue and pulling out the barrels to the road, having marked spots for the barrels, has been resolved. Um, the major issue that we're dealing with right now uh, is the proposed parking solution that was brought up at PNZ. So we'll be meeting with Transportation, the City Attorney's Office, and Engineering, along with the applicant, Monday. My recommendation at this point in time is to leave it on consent. Um, and then Monday, we may have a, um, a recommendation to either continue it or there may be some additional actions that we're going to have to consider. It may, can I get a clarification, Vice Mayor? Are you asking us to pull it off consent? No, I'm, uh, I'm comfortable with introducing it. Okay. Um, okay. I would not support it as okay. it is. Okay, later. On later on the next next round. Round. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I just want to be, be clear. But Monday, uh, before the council meeting, We'll share with the council our discussions and uh, if any resolutions regarding the um, parking um, alignment uh, in the property and whether we've been able to resolve that. If not, then we'll, we may request that the item be postponed for another day. Right. And um, Council Member Lou and I, I will make sure that I meet with you after we've had the internal meeting and let you know what resolution has come up, if any. I don't notice that there's a legal protest on this, so we don't have neighborhood opposition, correct? Okay. Um, 
All right. Any other? Let's work our way backwards, maybe on this agenda. Then uh, that was agenda item six. Any cons? Well, I guess for purposes of staff presentations, council, do you have any questions on anything on the agenda prior to going to the staff presentations? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Should we just go ahead and start with these uh, the yeah, 4A, presentation yeah, for four A then? Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, Mayor and Council. My name is Neil Curley, the Special Projects Manager uh, in the City Manager's Office. Here with me today is Jim Hash, our Bicycle and Pedestrian Project Coordinator. Uh, and on your agenda for the 19th, Item 4A, the, uh, regarding the bike share uh, program, here's kind of a preview of uh, what the bikes will look like, uh, what this contract will do. will bring bike share service, the, the grid bike share service, uh, to Mesa. And ever since the beginning of our discussions on bike share, we've taken uh, the regional approach uh, Phoenix launched their bike share program about a year ago with 200 bikes and have expanded to currently about 350 with plans to expand to 500 in the first quarter of 2016. Uh, and with this contract, the tentative timeline for bikes to launch in Mesa is the spring of 2016 with Tempe then launching after Mesa. Um, so as you can see, here's a little preview uh, of a hub and a bike share, uh, some bike share bikes in downtown Mesa next to the light rail. Uh, really what this is, this is kind of the next generation uh, of bike share in that all the technology is built into the bikes. You can kind of see this pack on the back of the bike uh, that allows users to tap their pass to the bike, enter in their pin, they gain access and can ride to their destination. And by working with Tempe and Phoenix and creating this regional model, uh, users will be able to use the same pass and that same account in all communities uh, to access uh, their bikes. Also, it's important to note on this contract is for the purchase of bike share equipment and the installation of that equipment. Uh, the vendor will be responsible for the day-to-day uh, -day operations and maintenance of the equipment. Uh, and with that, I'll go ahead and toss it to Jim to talk a little bit about the specifics of the system in Mesa. So for the first phase of the bike share that's going to be established, we're going to add uh, 100 bicycles at 10 different hubs that will be spread throughout, mostly the downtown region. We'll be utilizing the light rail as a spine for bike share. And with those uh, five stations along the light rail, we'll be adding five additional stations. Uh, we're going to begin with the first phase. We're going to add these five stations to mostly social service uh, facilities. We're going to uh, plan proposed stations at New Leaf. We have Save the Family. Uh, we also have, I'm sorry, I'm trying to see over here, uh, the Salvation Army, which is on 6th Street, as well as the uh, Mesa Community Action <coughs> Network uh, building. And, and our attempts and where we differ from the other communities is we're offering a, 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 what's called an unbanked membership, <coughs> which is a subsidy to these nonprofit agencies. So, the, so for folks that don't have the uh, capability of having a credit card or, or those types of things, they can uh, utilize these banked memberships with the social services that are throughout the community in order to uh, go to different appointments or, or things that they need to do throughout the day. So it gives them uh, the capability of use, utilizing bike share as well as the rest of the community in Mesa. So. And, the, and this is the first phase, and we will have uh, the ability in the future with this contract to expand the system uh, if we want in the future. And with that, we'll go ahead and entertain any questions. Thank you, Mr. Cavanaugh. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of interest in this uh, program since it was unveiled in Phoenix. And I originally thought we were unveiling it next month, but next spring, I hope it's earlier in spring rather than after spring training. Um, I've had a lot of interest from entities in the Fiesta District wanting to understand if we will have the capacity to expand in the future to partner with the city. As for an example, in the Fiesta District, we have the largest concentration of hotels anywhere in the city. And these are highly used by tourists, and that's another way for uh, a tourist down in that area to be able to access light rail. Now that we've got two light rail stations, you know, within two miles of, the, of there, we've also had interest from Mesa Community College. We've also had interest from Banner Desert Hospital. Also had interest from some of the uh, potential employers along the southern along Southern Avenue as well as to create some some options there, and so. Um, I'm hoping we can figure out or we can understand 
uh, what the process would be in the future to add it, whether it would be a partnership where the requesting entity would help like purchase the bikes and we would build the pads or uh, how would that work? Yes, uh, Mayor and Vice Mayor uh, Kavanaugh. So the, the great thing about this system too is uh, it has the GPS uh, kind of on the bikes and the vendor will monitor the use patterns and we can adjust, very easily adjust uh, where those locations will be based on that use. But then also too, uh, we can, the, the vendor can directly approach say Mesa Community College or some of those businesses and if they are interested, they have the ability to sponsor a station and they can place a station outside of their business with a rack of bikes. Great, great, thank you Mayor. In addition to that, with the, the capability of this bike share that's not available with other bike share, there's no actual infrastructure that goes into the ground. So these are easily moved. If we have a special event, we want to take some of the bike racks, move them to a, a different area for, a, a, say, like when the convention came in, the Republican convention came in, uh, we'll be able to do that to, to meet those needs as well as with the different spring training facilities. So, Mr. Luna. Uh, I just want to tell you I appreciate you working with Save the Family with some of our nonprofits. Many of those individuals don't have vehicles to get to their jobs. Now, will they be able to take the, the bikes to their jobs, or will they have to park it where there is a designated area? Or that's another, uh, Mayor, uh, Council Member Luna, that's another advantage to this system as well. So we will have these hubs. Uh, people can lock them up to the racks on the hubs, but the bikes can also be locked up outside of the hub locations. So you can take it, let's say there's not a hub at your apartment or your uh, place of employment, and lock it up there. But it's important to note that'll be, there'll be a, it's a $2 convenience fee in order to do that. But then if you bring it back to a hub, uh, you get a dollar of that back. Are, are they charged hourly or? Is that how it works? Yes, so the memberships are based, you can, are daily, uh, monthly, and, or they're going to just monthly. So that, what that gets you is a certain bucket of time per day free, uh, and then anything over, you start in, incurring kind of um, per the minute charges, a, a rate that's prorated per the minute. Mr. Venter, just looking at the numbers, so these memberships, uh, who gets the revenue from the memberships then? We're supplementing this at 250 grand. That's $2,500 a bike. That's $6.8 uh, a day. So does that membership go to reduce that uh, subsidy that we're doing, or who gets that money? All right, so the, the membership fees, the, the, the way this model is uh, set up, the vendor uh, collects membership fees uh, and advertising dollars as well as sponsorships. Uh, but part of this agreement, there's a revenue sharing component for uh, the membership dollars with the city. So there's a revenue sharing component. What, what would that be? Can you give a little more detail? So it's uh, every dollar over $250,000, uh, the city will get half and split that half with the vendor, half with the city. So. Okay, thank you. Council, any additional questions? Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. thank you. So this will be on, on our agenda for Monday night. Uh, next item that we're getting a presentation on, I believe, uh, is 5K, is that correct? 5K and L. Good morning, Mayor and Council. I'm Scott Butler, joined with by Transit Services Director Joey Sorrell. Wanted to give you an update. Let's see if we can pull this up. Great. Well, the good news is, Mayor and Council, it's not even 8 a.m. and you get to save $9 million on uh, the Gilbert Road light rail extension. So that starts your day off, off very well. And one of, the, one of the main reasons we wanted to highlight um, this, this very complicated agreement that does a few simple things. And, and we, of course, joined by a fleet of other uh, folks from, from finance and um, transit and others who can answer any technical questions you may have uh, about this. But we are amending the existing uh, project development agreement, uh, project advance agreement that we have for the Gilbert Road light rail extension. And by doing so, it, it will do a few things. 
first of which it reflects the fact that the Maricopa Association of Governments has given us an interest-free loan of $32 million to apply to this project. What's happening around the region, there are various federal transit projects that aren't moving forward in the time frame that they were envisioned. If you think of the Tempe streetcar, for example, that would already supposed to be under construction, but for you know, various reasons that has not started yet. And so in, to ensure that our region does not lose those federal dollars with all the um, mystery of funding that's happening in Washington today. Uh, the, the region would like to spend those monies on an eligible uh, transit project. So they're loaning us that money to, to the Gilbert Road project. We'll be able to use that money interest-free. And then later, as uh, money becomes available from our project as planned, we pay the region back, and the region puts that back into the projects they were supposed to go for. So it's a win-win for the region and for the city. And just doing that for $32 million saves the overall project $9 million um, right off the bat. So just so, Mayor and Council, if we didn't have these funds, what would be happening is the city would be accruing interest on what we, you know, on the, this amount. So it's, that's where this, I mean, it's not something where uh, the, the bills do now, I guess the way of saying, and by pre, I don't know if we will actually pre have to issue, I'm sorry, Chris, I mean, uh, mayor and council, um, we'll have to, we'll be able to issue uh, transportation project advancement notes for a lesser, lesser amount, amount, right? which will then save us since we won't have to issue for the amount that we had initially estimated, then we'll save the interest expense. On, on those notes because we were going to have to just pay the interest cost for a period of time until the dollars start to coming in from prop 400 to pay those off so this is a huge opportunity for us I and mean, it is real savings from the numbers we showed council how long ago were we here about a year ago a year ago mm -hmm. so we had anticipated that we were going to have to make payments uh, for a period of time until we got reimbursed essentially to advance it we said that was important because getting light rail hair sooner was we justified that that was worth that expense but now we have the region stepping up and bridging helping us bridge some of that gap and that will help mitigate against interest costs um, that we otherwise would have had to pay and mayor and council to chris's point it could get even better the region has indicated that there may be even more money that they would would like to loan to this project and the changes that we are con that council will consider on Monday evening will allow further advances to come into this project without having to come back to you to seek this approval. So a second component of this document is allowing even more regional dollars to come into the project that will then um, will be able to apply and issue less TPANs in the future. So it could uh, certainly lead to even more cost savings if some of the projections that MAG has today uh, ring true and they do need to find a safe harbor for these regional dollars to make sure that they're not rescinded back to Washington. So that's the second component of what it does. Uh, this uh, Also in this agreement, it reaffirms uh, that the city intends to issue transportation project advancement notes. You've already, as a council, given that direction when we entered into this agreement about a year ago, but it just reaffirms uh, that, that commitment. And then uh, the fourth component of this is that it authorizes our 5.7% local match for the project. We've, we've discussed that all along, that that's, that's the city's skin in the game for this project is 5.7% which is great. When you look at federal projects, most transit projects uh, across the country require a much more robust local match. We're able to do this because of the flavor of the federal dollars that we're using only require a 5.7% match. So it's, we're getting um, a, a very uh, important transportation infrastructure for a very small local match relative to what most communities across the country have to pay. So it's, uh, it's good news in that regard. The second item, item 5K, so, so that, the first item, 5J, is the amended agreement that reflects those four components. The next item, 5K, is council's direction to staff that they can, at the appropriate time, issue the sale of the transportation project advancement notes. We're asking for council authority to issue up to $100 million in uh, TPANs. We're hopeful that based upon everything we've just talked about, uh, that number 
and because of project cost, uh, once the final um, number comes in for what the uh, guaranteed maximum price of the project is, that the TPAN issuance will only be around uh, $70 million, give or take. But, but because of the fact that we do not have a guaranteed maximum price yet and other fluctuations, we're looking for some uh, discretion from council to allow up to $100 million. But we certainly believe the cost will be lower than that. At this point, the good news is since day one uh, of this project, the costs have come in lower or we've found different project savings along the way. Included in this, just, just recently, we're finding out that uh, because of Phoenix's passage of uh, Proposition 104, they'll be purchasing more light rail vehicles in anticipation of the, the extensions that their Prop 104 will pay for. Included in our Gilbert Road project costs were capital expenses for buying new light rail vehicles to serve Gilbert Road. Because of Phoenix's purchase, we get better buying power, which means cheaper vehicles. So another good and good cost savings in the millions of dollars that we'll see on this project that we're that's evolving uh, as each day passes. So we're very bullish on this. We think uh, everything is looking great and we get through Central Mesa, which was a great success, and now immediately, no, no rest for staff uh, on this or for council that we immediately turn to Gilbert Road, but it all starts with, with good news. Thank you. Mr. Glover. Uh, I want to thank Scott and especially Jody for all your hard work and taking advantage of the economies of scale, especially on the light rail. I have a quick question for uh, Mr. Smith. I know that there's litigation against the city that was dismissed regarding uh, the issuance of T-PANs, uh, and we are waiting to see if there's appealed. Can you give us an update on that? Yeah, Mayor, Council, um, it, w it was appealed. Uh, we prevailed both at the trial court and at the Court of Appeals, um, and the Supreme Court did not take review, and so the time has passed, and so that litigation is complete. Mr. Pinter. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a quick history of the success of T-PANs, and what did we call them before, H-PANs, or what, what was it? Uh, it's it's been a really remarkable how that's worked well to the benefit of everybody. If you don't mind, absolutely, Mayor and uh, Council Member Finter. It, we we were actually just talking before the meeting started with with staff that's been working on the um, highway project advancement note effort with State Route 24, where we accelerated that freeway infrastructure by Gateway Airport, uh, get, received the facility five years ahead of schedule. We saved $100 million for the region by doing so, and the city of Mesa um, will will close out um, in, in just a few months, I believe, uh, on this completely, but the city will spend zero dollars uh, on advancing that infrastructure using creative financing. So Mesa, the city of Mesa did not have to spend a dime of its local requirements because of the efficiencies in the project and the regional dollars and how we leveraged that. Uh, then Mayor and Vice Mayor, uh, excuse me, and Council Member Finter, we went back to the legislature showing the success of the highway project advancement notes and said, you should really give this authority across all infrastructure mediums. Allow us to do this with transit as well. Regardless of your views on it, state legislature, it's good to save taxpayer dollars and it's good to find efficiencies. And, and, they, and they did do that. And a lot of support from President Andy Biggs and others who said, if you're going to do it, let's do it in the most efficient manner. And, um, and they, the legislature did authorize TPANs uh, to, with just the transit component to, to uh, complement and supplement the highway component. And now this will be our first uh, endeavor to go down this route with TPANs, but the HPAN model has been an excellent success that we've used at Gateway. And then with, um, before that, the 202 Red Mountain several years ago uh, that several of you were involved in at the time that also saved us uh, considerable uh, money and resources at the time. Thank you. Mr. Cavanaugh. Yeah, I was going to expand on that ancient history a little bit. The idea for the advancement notes really originated with the City of Mesa staff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jeff Martin was your intergov predecessor, mm -hmm. one of them. And uh, the, uh, without that concept, the old timers will recall the 202 was not scheduled to be completed until 2014. And so the, the, that creative use uh, really <coughs> created a dramatic change in, for economic development and development in the city as a whole by... By doing that, got approval of the legislature ultimately to be able to do it. But 
that creative concept really originated with with uh, with Mesa staff, which has consistently been at the forefront of looking at at ways to protect the public dollar while advancing important public projects. And so, just again, um, I think uh, community owes a, a thank you for all the years for for uh, support from the manager's office, city staff, in uh, in in thinking. I hate to use the term thinking outside the box, but that this is really a great example of where that thinking has saved the city millions and millions of dollars and accelerated important projects. Absolutely, Mayor and Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Martin's here in, in the audience this morning, but uh, very familiar with this project, as you said, uh, Vice Mayor, and it's something that we, we continue to use as expertise on. And the good story is, just like you you said, Vice Mayor, we've, we've seen throughout the organization from engineering, looking in best team, looking at ways when we were doing work on Main Street years ago in order to relocate some of the utilities at that point, which will save overall project costs now as we put light rail to Gilbert Road through our finance department and, and Mike Kennington's team and how they've looked at the financing side of this. It's really, and, and it goes on and on, I'm leaving out all the different departments that touch this. Uh, and, and needless to say, Jody and her team and everything that they do uh, to, to make this project a success. But I, I think, as you allude to, Vice Mayor, it's um, a point of pride that Mesa has been at the forefront of delivering infrastructure, unlike any other community in this in this state, and doing it in a really cost-effective manner. And uh, I think that leads to some jealousy to all of you as you go to your conferences and they get to hear about the new freeway opening or the new light rail opening. We've done that really with utmost consideration of taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Scott and Jody. Uh, another job well done. And thank you to MAG. I, I think this points to the value of us having a, a good regional uh, esprit de corps with our partners at MAG and uh, taking advantage of their goodwill and the ability to, to use this money without any cost to the city. That's great. Uh, any additional questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I think that completes the staff presentation, does it not, Mr. Brady? Okay, so moving on to the remainder of the agenda for the study session. Um, item number two is to hear a presentation and provide direction to city staff regarding the donation of a front end loader to the city of Guaymas, Mexico. Ian, welcome. Good, good morning, Mayor and Council. I'll pull this up here real quick. Uh, uh, as Mayor mentioned, I'm Ian Linson, uh, Chief of Staff to Mayor Giles. And uh, I'm here this morning to discuss an opportunity to um, donate a piece of equipment to um, Wymus, Mexico. Uh, and of course, Wymus was, uh, or is, Mesa's first sister city. Um, and as probably most of you have heard, a couple of Saturdays ago on October 3rd, uh, Wymus was hit with the remnants of Hurricane Marty. Um, and we found out that um, they, it was about four inches of rain that um, they got in a day. I uh, talked to a couple people over there in the Wymus mayor's office, and they said they've never seen that type of flooding before. Um, saw a couple pictures and uh, just water, you know, up to the doors of businesses in the streets and, and that sort of thing. So um, they... Uh, in, in talking with them, mentioned that um, a number of things happened, 1,000 homes damaged, over 400 vehicles, and a couple hundred folks uh, that were left homeless from uh, the rain and flooding. And they, you know, they started out um, needing you know, those, those basic essentials, water, food, um, infant supplies, things like that. Mesa Sister Cities Association actually stepped up and um, put together a food drive and um, through the chamber as well and Benedictine University. And actually, we have a couple of Mesa Sister City members that are down there um, today assisting with the recovery efforts. Um, but in discussions with the uh, Wymus Mayor's staff, uh, came to find out that some of their the, the big needs uh, uh, came in the form of heavy equipment uh, that could clear the debris and kind of the, the damage caused by the rain and the floods. And so we, we took a look, and with the help of fleet, um, tried to see if we did have anything that could be available. And we, we came across a particular piece of equipment um, that was just about ready to, to go to auction. It's a 1992 Caterpillar 916 loader. Um, it's uh, had a good years, a number of years of service with us. Started in 92, was just retired in 2015. Uh, it did meet its 15-year replacement. Um, and it's just become cost prohibitive for us to, to maintain at this point. So 
Um, it's, it's available for pickup. Uh, they, they said it's going to be of great help to them. I have a little picture of it there for you as well. So it's, it's ready to go if, if, uh, if council thinks that's a good idea. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Luna. Uh, how, how are we going to get it to the border? Have we discussed how we're going to do that? And I know that when uh, the mayor and I were in Mexico City, we spoke to the council general from, from Mexico to uh, Mexico, Arizona. And uh, he said that he would take care of anything related to taking it to Mexico. And then we have a representative from Weimas that will actually transport it to, to the city of Weimas. How are we going to get it to the board? Yeah, a great question. Thanks, uh, Mayor and Councilmember Luna. Uh, in talking with some of the staff down there, they have said they will actually come up here and, and pick it up um, from us and drive it down. So they're going to take care of all of those logistics. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. Ian, do you happen to know what the auction value for that piece of equipment? Yeah, is? yeah, absolutely. And, and Mayor and Councilmember Thompson, it's estimated because it's an auction anywhere between twenty and thirty-five thousand um, for that. Thank you. Any additional questions, Council? So, uh, this is on our uh, agenda for action today. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. This is not. We, right. could, we just need. We need direction from. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Luna. No, I. I would like to move that we. Oh, yeah. yeah. If I can, you just direction for the councils in concurrence, and that's what we need. Is that okay. Direction. So. So I. I move that we give the tractor to our sister city in Weimar. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, I. Uh, was with Mr. Mr. Luna uh, in Mexico City last week, so I can tell you that uh, this was an item that was very much requested and discussed uh, in our conversations with the governor of Sonora and in, in conversations since then with the mayor of uh, Wymas. Uh, our community has a very good and, uh, and noteworthy tradition of helping our friends in Wymas. Uh, you may recall that it wasn't really just a couple of months ago that we had a, a, a piece of fire equipment that was ready to be retired and we gifted it to them. So this is consistent with what uh, what we've done with this community over several years and so and, and that's a I'm proud of that uh, that history that we have with Wymus. It's it's very much appreciated. I know at having heard directly from them uh, on several occasions that that's the case. And I also just want to say a special, special thank you to uh, Mesa Sister Cities. There are folks there, as has been mentioned right now, that are on the ground and that are communicating back to, to Mesa what we can do, what the most needed uh, items are. Uh, and the Mesa Rotary Club has a long history with Wymus. Uh, and uh, the Chamber and Benedictine University, as has been noted uh, earlier, are all very involved in this uh, relief uh, effort. So. Thank you to them for, for stepping up. Um, so if there's nothing else that's been moved and seconded that we make this contribution, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. I know that will be uh, very well received and very much appreciated. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item three, acknowledge receipt of minutes of boards and committees. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Next item is to hear reports on meetings and or conferences attended. Mr. Cavanaugh. <clears throat> Thank you. I just want to report earlier this week, uh, Tuesday evening, uh, the mayor and I participated in a ceremony to dedicate the uh, five new microparks in the Fiesta District, part of the streetscape uh, improvement. And uh, we did lit them up. Uh, it, I think, staff did a very good job in ensuring that uh, it was done uh, in time for the dedication. And I want to compliment uh, everyone who was involved in that in that effort. The uh, uh, the new parks look uh, look beautiful during the day, but very special in the evening. And it really creates a very nice, uh, uh, striking boulevard effect up and down uh, Southern Avenue. So uh, uh, my uh, compliments also to the uh, designers. This is something that we've worked with them for several years, and they they promised us something special with these parks, and I think they delivered. So thank you. Uh, thank you, and, and I'll just say amen to that. Uh, if you haven't driven uh, Southern Avenue lately, you need to. It's, it's beautiful, and particularly at nighttime now with the, with the lighting fixtures and the water feature that's out in front of uh, Centrica, which uh, stay tuned for an exciting announcement related to Centrica uh, very soon. Uh, 
Council, any other reports on conferences or scheduling? Uh, if not, Mr. Brady, can you help us with the scheduling going forward? Thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder, um, our next study session council meeting will be this uh, coming Monday, October 19th. And then uh, we will not be having a study session on October 22nd, so a week from today. Um, also want to share with you that this weekend, we have a busy week and busy Saturday, specifically October 17th. Falcon uh, Warbirds Pancake Breakfast and Fly-In from 8 to 11 a.m. at the Falcon Warbirds Hangar at Falcon Field Airport. So invited, the pub pilots and public are invited to attend. We also have a household hazardous waste event from 8 a.m. to noon at the East Mesa Service Center. So bring your household hazardous waste, electronics, and appliances. It's a free event for Mesa residents. Also downtown on Saturday will be the Mesa Arts and Crafts Festival from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in downtown. And then also um, we're excited um, this um, Saturday we'll have a Celebrate Mesa event. It's a free party in uh, the park uh, at Red Mountain Soccer Complex from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's a great event, well attended, so we invite everybody out to this great event. So thank you very much. Great, thank you. I'm sorry. Celebrate Mesa one more time. Let's highlight that. That's a big deal. Yes, we go. Free, par free party in the park from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Red Mountain Soccer Complex, 905 North Sun Valley Boulevard. Um, live entertainment, ride games, and just a whole lot of fun. And what day is that, Mr. Brady? Saturday, October 17th. Saturday, October 17th. Okay. <laughs> so we've all been to that. That's a huge yeah. deal. But for the folks at home, you know, get ready. And, and it's, a, it's always kind of a nice Halloween-themed park, too. Yeah. Um, there's usually a witch that appears, uh, yeah. Ms. Zolanka. Do you know if that's going to happen? <laughs> is that going to happen this year? Do we know? Um, I think the, the witch is on vacation this year. <laughs> what, what, was that a yes or? A, okay. <laughs> oh, you're saying that the appearance of the witch is a regular occurrence? <laughs> I didn't take it there, okay? That was the, that was the everybody else. Not everybody. Mr. Cavanaugh, I'm sorry. Um, I have to report from the transit side, the very famous haunted bus will be returning. Actually, oh, there'll right. be two haunted buses because they were so oh, yeah. scary and popular last year. So sure. Jody Sorrell and her staff do a, a great job uh, with that. And uh, it's one of the more popular uh, attractions at the event. That's true. I walked through the haunted bus last year, and it's worth going. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments on Celebrate Mesa? Okay, well, we're all really, as you can tell, everyone, we're really looking forward to Celebrate Mesa, so if you haven't gone, do yourself a big favor and go to that event. Uh, if there's nothing else, when I, as far as scheduling, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. We are adjourned.